um, to the to the Skype uh, session. So here we have Demir Mahmoud Chayhaj. We've been we've I've been Demir practicing. <laughs> um, he was a long time civil rights activist and politician in his native Bosnia. Thank you Demir. very much. That was Nia. Um, I cannot say it's a pleasure to be here, um, but it's obligation, and I would uh, first of all like to thank my brother uh, Zarni for inviting me and giving me opportunity to talk to you all. Um, I was 15 years old when um, um, aggression on my country was started by the, uh, at that time, fifth largest military force in the world. Um, it was called the Yugoslav army, but it was called, uh, controlled by the Serbs and a Serbian state. Um, in the early beginning of the war, war uh, a Serbian general said, gave order to his soldiers. He said uh, uh, that they should clear the town of Bielina. This is in early 1992. Uh, of all Muslims, regardless to the costs to his soldiers, meaning regardless of how many of his soldiers would uh, get killed in clearing Bielina of all Muslims. They cleared Bielina of all Muslims and uh, his army suffered no loss at all. That's what kind of conflict it was. And this is very important because what Zani said that uh, genocides are not conflicts. We are not talking about war. We are not talking about two armies fighting each other. We are not talking about war crimes where the illegal ammunition is used. Or we are not talking about arguments uh, is a bombing of Dresden in 1945 a war crime or not. We are not talking about uh, the, the conflicts. We are talking about a fully fledged military force organized indoctrinated, sent to slaughter, to eat up those who are systematically dehumanized and turned into vermin. This is the same pattern, same scenario for so long. We can talk about the process of dehumanizing Jews in Germany to the point that an ordinary German was uh, fully comfortable uh, slaughtering children, women, men, innocent civilians, and then going back home and kissing his own children. This, this does not happen overnight. Um, in this same town, uh, I was born in Germany, in Duisburg, in 1976, because my parents were gastarbeiters, guest workers. But this is my first time that I'm actually attending a conference or any social event in Germany. But I know a lot about Berlin and Germany in general. Um, in this town, there was another conference in 1878. It was called Berlin Congress, where a six world powers at that time decided how to divide Europe. Um, a question at that time was what to do with the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire that was receding, that was pulling back or losing the power, and especially after recent war with the uh, increasingly powerful Russian Empire. So they decided that uh, some territories of Ottoman Empire they would give to the different other powers. And my uh, home country, Bosnia and Herzegovina, was uh, given to Austro-Hungary. Uh, the first direct consequence of those guys sitting in Berlin and deciding on a map what they're going to do was that the Ottoman soldiers pulled out from my hometown. The, the militia came in, spent the two days rampaging and doing whatever they were wanted to do, and wrote the report that uh, everything that uh, was burnable in Stolac has burnt. So it was a race to the ground. That was in 1878. From 1878 till 1992, we've been through 11 genocides. Through the 11 periods where there was attempt to eradicate the community, to eradicate those who call themselves whatever they like to call themselves. Because it's my right to call myself whatever I want. I'm a human being. I can 
profess any religion or no religion, I can say I'm called um, Jedi, whatever is my right. And if there are so many of us who feel like that, it's our right, and nobody has the right to take it away from me. It's only in 92, 93, 94, 95, that uh, uh, was uh, partly recognized of what's going on in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And then a uh, tribunal was set up, apparently, to bring a justice to victims and to punish the perpetrators. But then something came up when we were talking here as well. If uh, we, if the, 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 the states, if the governments uh, accept that the genocide has happened in uh, Rakhin against the Rohingyas, and it's still happening, yeah, then there is a responsibility. There are legal obligations to act, to do something. Uh, why would they do that? Uh, there, is no, there is no interest in, in world powers when they can sell weapons, when they can wait for these things to sort out and then go and uh, use the resources, new titanium and other you know, stuff that is being found out there. You know? We, an ordinary, and I say ordinary human beings, because we are not power makers, we are not, we are not those who are deciding a little, you know? we are not important. Our only uh, power is when we unite on a state, or on, on, on a world human level, when we share our sufferings, our experiences, when we show that I'm a Rohingya currently, and I'm every nation, every person who is suffering injustice, my experience should be used to prevent those others who are suffering. And this is, this is a message that we need to carry on from here. If we manage to integrate more and pay more uh, 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 social media and all other attentions to what's going on at the moment, we have a chance. It would not be useless for us coming here. We need to continue. This is an, a credible pressure that they are not used to doing it. You know, the reaction from the Myanmar government is uh, incredible. And yesterday we had a talk uh, at the dinner like, uh, what is the future? What, what, what is going to happen? And there was at one point quite a, a pessimist view, like, we can't do much. You know? And then we heard that, that the Myanmar government is organizing a conference, contra this conference. Oh, come on. You know, if they are not worried, why would they bother? Well, you know, if they are not bothered, you know, they would have just ignored. So if well, 150, 200 of us can do such a thing. And this is why I absolutely agree with the Zani that we can do so much from outside of Myanmar, outside of Burma. It's our responsibility as much as we can, all of us, and bring as many pos people as possible. This is what is necessary to prevent new genocide, to stop this genocide, the, the, the global uh, action, reaction, constant activism, not just because there is a, a fire burning in Myanmar and we are active. We, we need to change. The, the, it is the only way how we can answer to the question that the Mark asked today, uh, were there people who were helping? I'll tell you one story in the Bosnian war. Uh, in a town called Trebinje, uh, something happened that uh, is giving a hope to um, normal people that the, the future is possible, that not all people are evil. Yeah? Muslims were uh, hunted like animals on the streets, in alleys, on the fields, and there was a, 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 a happening in the streets where some Serbs uh, saw a Muslim guy passing by. We don't know what he was doing. Maybe he just um, 
came out of his hiding place to try to get some food or something. We don't know. That, that, that is something that is not explainable. And they caught him. They started beating him up, you know, uh, kicking him, uh, smacking him, basically you know, uh, uh, beating him up in a sub such a way that they wanted to kill him. And another Serb, Srđan Aleksic, yeah, he rushed up trying to stop these guys. Yeah, he started fighting them. He was in a military uniform as well. Yeah. And as he was protecting this Muslim guy, he got a chance to run away. But the Srđan got killed. You know, so you have a you have a story now that the, the guy that he came to protect is still alive. Got three kids. He lives somewhere in Scandinavia. Comes every year to the to the graveyard, a, 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 a surgeon, and brings the flowers. And is a good friend with his father and everything. Um, I took thirty young people just uh, a month ago to Trebinje to visit the surgeon's grave and to lay flowers and talk to his father. His father is incredibly proud, man. He said, my surgeon was not a Serb. He was a human being. That's what his father is saying. But then we ask a question, why there were so few surgeons? And this is what we need to work out so that in any conflict we we encourage that there are more people like him. Because if we get to the position that there is a human courage to get more people who will not stand up to the such things, then we have a chance to prevent the genocides. I thank you very much to all of you. I will uh, do my best to bring uh, Zarni and all of you to, to Srebrenica, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, to see the, 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 the results of, of genocides over there. There was a lady who was there last year with me. 7,000 graves are witnessing to what happened just in one day. You know, we should never forget, yeah? but we should also do so much that it never happens again. Thank you very much.